Hey guys, welcome back to another virtual chemistry lab. Today we're going to take a look at the heat of fusion of water. What is heat of fusion? Well, heat of fusion is simply this. This is ice. Ice is really cold, but as I hold on to it, the heat flows from my fingers into the ice. This warms up the ice and allows the attractive forces between the ice molecules to loosen up, allowing the solid to turn into a liquid. And the heat of fusion is how much potential energy it takes for that to happen per gram of ice that you want to melt. So, what we're going to do is we're going to take some ice. Ha! And what we're going to do is place it into a calorimeter cup into which a measured mass of water has been placed. We're actually not going to measure the mass of the water though. We're going to measure the volume of the water. I have in this pot some water that's heating up right now. And I'm going to pour 100 milliliters of hot water into this calorimeter cup. Very sophisticated, huh? Last time it was a soda can, this time it's some styrofoam cups. Again, it's all for the insulation. So the hot water will go in here, then the ice cubes will go into the hot water after I've recorded the starting temperature of the water. Because the formula you're going to use is Q equals MC delta T. So M will be the mass of water we put in, which is going to be 100 grams, 100.0 grams. C is the specific heat of water, 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius. And your temperature change will be the starting temperature before you put ice in, and then the ending temperature after the temperature doesn't drop anymore, even though you're putting ice in. All right, that'll be your MC delta T. Then what we have to do is figure out how many grams of ice melted. So to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer the water into this beaker, pour out 100 milliliters, that will represent the original 100 milliliters that I put in the calorimeter cup, and dump it, and whatever is left, that represents the volume of ice that melted. And since the density of water is one gram per milliliter, the number of milliliters will be the same as the number of grams. So we can get around having to weigh it out, okay? Very convenient, huh? All right, so we're just waiting for this water to come to, not a boil, but get warm enough that uh, it actually can be used. Let me see where we're at. So here's your procedure here that we're going to detail as we go through. And here is where you're going to record your data, the volume of the hot water in the calorimeter cup, the starting temperature of the water, the final temperature of the water, and the volume of ice that melted. That's where you're going to put all of your data. Okay, let's go ahead and do the experiment. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna pour out 100 milliliters, which will weigh 100 grams. And because this graduated cylinder is measured to the ones place, we can actually take it to the nearest 10. Here we go, 100 milliliters of hot water. And then we're going to record the temperature of that water, the starting temperature. We'll wait for the temperature to stop rising. In this case, unlike the last lab, I would like you to go to the nearest tenth of a degree. Still rising. There. That temperature right there, recorded to the nearest tenth of a degree. And we're going to start adding ice. Here we go. Look 
at the temperature now. We're not done yet, but you can see the temperature is dropping. So let's get more ice in there. Oh yeah. Okay, now let's see. Is the temperature remaining constant? There it is. Okay. So read the temperature again to the nearest tenth of a degree. Boy, isn't that number very suspicious? Yes, that is the freezing point of water. This is the temperature at which solid and liquid water can exist in equilibrium. Now, before I lose any more ice, I'm going to transfer the water over to the beaker while keeping the ice in the styrofoam cup. So here we go. I'm using the thermometer as a dam to block the ice from getting out so that only the water, see, there we go. You gotta keep that ice from coming out. And even then I wasn't fully successful. And then there was one piece of ice, so I'm going to retrieve it using crucible tongs. I don't want to stick my fingers in there, so let's get the crucible tongs and get that piece of ice out of there. Ah, okay, it's gone. Now that we know what we've got, we're gonna set that to the side and we are going to measure how much ice melted. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to pour in the first 100 milliliters, which will represent the volume of ice, uh, sorry, the volume of water that we originally put into the calorimeter. So this 100 milliliters is the water we originally put in the calorimeter and I'm going to dump it out. So whatever remains in that beaker represents the volume of ice that melted. All right. Now go ahead and record that volume, record the volume of ice that melted. Okay. So now all you have to do is go into your lab and Record, after you've recorded your data, you're going to calculate the heat of fusion of ice. Now, I give you some information here on how to do it. And what you're going to do is put down all the calculations you're going to need to do in order to achieve that goal. The heat of fusion of ice in joules of heat per gram of ice. So, what are you going to calculate? Why is it necessary to calculate it? Show all your work and then the answer properly rounded with a unit. The last one you do, and you may not need all of these, the last calculation that you do should end in joules over grams, joules per gram. Now when you're done with that, there are some additional conclusion questions to answer. So go ahead and just answer those and then you'll be all set.